presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Al in Tampa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Oh, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, if your listeners don't get the gold report, they're, uh, they're missing out. I mean, you're... With your gold report, you just printing money. I love it. Uh, you're my best ad out there, Al. Let's go to uh, Jeff in New Jersey. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Great. Uh, hey, listen, I was calling to thank you. Uh, a few weeks ago, you were prompting on your show to fill out that uh, $10,000 uh, grant. Yes. So I filled it out, and um, just a couple days ago, I found $1,000 in my business checking account. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I owe it to you, because it, if it wasn't for your prompting, I, I would have just assumed, you know, no way I would have gotten anything. So I, I wanted to thank you. No, we appreciate you growling a problem with us yet. No. Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup. I'm filling in for Tom O'Brien again. He is all good. He'll be back next week. Let's take a look what we got going on. We do have a caller on the line, but let me just get through uh, the kind of what's going on in the market currently. Pretty phenomenal. Yes, Mini up 1.25%. I mean, we're up almost 40 points here in the, in the spy. I mean, this is a nice day. Russell about 0.94%, NQs up nearly 2%, tech roaring. Dow futures up 1.12%, trading right up above that $38,000 level. We were looking at that, we were talking a little bit last week. We had this kind of consolidation going a little bit down, and uh, we were looking for a trade above $38,000. let us see if we can settle there for the rest of the day. Gold contract trading at 2,031, up modestly today. Silver lagging behind a little bit, our boy Copper Copper futures, that is, at up about 1.2%. Man, what can we say about the crude oil futures, right? A volatile kind of trading range that we're in right now. From that 70 to 75 mark, a lot of really interesting news going on with it that's kind of adding to volatility. Uh, let's take a look. We have Tesla trading about 212. Maybe we could see a little comeback in it. We'll have to wait, really, I would say, for next week to see what the move is going to be in that. Steel Dynamics back up in that 113 level. The dollar is still kind of strong at 103.28, but trading a little bit to the downside. QQQ is up 1.98%. Google, 1.92%. Meta, let's see. We'll talk a little bit about why the techs are kind of soaring right now. Uh, JP Morgan really blowing up about 1.58%. Bank of America up about 1.43%. <laughs> Lucid coming back up for some reason, about 7.17%. Still don't think the company is really set. And then we have the Bitcoin ETFs are actually doing okay today after a few days of a sell-off. So to begin the show, we actually have a caller on the line. Costa, are you there? Sure am. Hi, how are you, sir? How, doing all right, Costa. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's cold in Massachusetts. I imagine it is. I think we're getting a freeze over the weekend in Florida. By that, I mean it's going to be something about 40 degrees or something. Right. So probably not as cold. Okay. So uh, what are we taking a look at today, Costa? No more mining, NEM. I put in a stop loss in. Like Tommy said, at 38 and a half. I got back in at 35. I bought 500 shares. Now I'd like to know um, where is it going from here and can I buy another 500 lower? Yeah, so I think we're, here. Right, we were talking about Newmont uh, a little bit last week. Um, a caller had called for the, the same kind of thing. Obviously, we have a downward trend going on. A lot of these miners are having some issues. One of the things I think is at least good about Newmont currently is, you know, we're still kind of on a downward trajectory, but it, it is on lighter volume. Sometimes that can suggest, a lot of times that can suggest that we're going to have a, you know, kind of a movement to the opposite way. The, the thing for me with mining right now, and, and this is my take, and if, if you want Tom's take, he'll be back Tuesday as well. I just don't know what the catalyst is going to be for it, right? How much lower can we really go down? I'm not sure. You know, we're, we're testing really kind of this low of the year, which is 33.59. And I mean that by like a year to date kind of deal. Uh, so we're, we're right back there again, uh, again on lower volume. So it seems like there's going to be kind of a run out of sellers essentially, right? It's just about when do you have that kind of trend reversal that we're seeing. And I think at least right now, that's kind of a little hard to say when we're going to see that take off. Um, of course, a lot of the miners are having issues right now, kind of just a little bit of, uh, 
you know, Tim Horton was on yesterday, at least talking about the GDX in, the, in its total, and it's just kind of this slump activity we've been, we've been seeing. So um, I was saying to the caller last week about Newmont that I don't anticipate this going down much, much lower, but I just don't know on what time frame we're going to see a reversal that, uh, you know, we can get back up to something around the 40s. That's kind of, that's kind of my take on it right now, Costa. Okay. Thanks, so, yeah, sir. absolutely. And, again, Tom will be back Tuesday as well if you want to get his. And of course, you know, Tom goes over uh, so much So regarding these kind of monitors. So thank you very much for calling in. Thank you. All right. Let's take a look what we got going on. Hmm. Had the... Okay, I wanted to talk about Celsius, right? Because I actually, one of my uh, sinful habits is I, is I drink these energy drinks, and I'd really like to get away from that. I got off caffeine for a while, and then stress just gets to you, I guess, right, guys? Celsius, huge drop down today. Uh, it got downgraded, essentially, uh, just to a neutral. You know, not a sell or anything. This is from Bank of America. Why? The idea is Celsius has actually skyrocketed over the time, right? It, it is a newcomer to this energy market. It has really knocked, I've noticed on shelves in, in a, a bunch of different stores, uh, it, it has really dominated some of the, the main space, right? And that's what you want to see with these kind of products. What the analysts were looking at is that Celsius has exploded in growth, but the question is, is how much longer can that go? And I think that, at least from the guy over here at Bank of America, he was saying he seems that this triple-digit growth that they had been experiencing, and let's look at this. In 2021, it was up 140% in revenue. In 2022, up 108%. And in the first three quarters of 2023, up 104%. I mean, that is pretty significant growth, okay? And I think what they're saying is that you're going to see kind of a slowdown in this. So how do we reprice this, this equity here? One of the things I will say about Celsius is I, I don't think that they have big market share outside of the U.S. So going forward, that's decent for the company uh, regarding a potential for growth. What I'll also say is that they've released a new line of drinks. I think they're called Live Fit. And I'm not a big fan of uh, the normal Celsius, but, but people love them. And, and it definitely has a kind of like like it's a signal right a social signal right like i drink celsius this is kind of like the fit you know kind of pretty people drink this stuff right and uh they're expanding out to some of the more you know gym bros or fit activity and earlier today i tried uh, the the new product they had that again has this really dominant positioning on the shelf and it actually was pretty good and i i, I think they've they're tweaking the recipe uh, at least for right now you know this is some pretty significant volume to the downside uh, we'll see how much lower this can go, uh, but I but I do think going forward Celsius is still uh, kind of a, a decent company, right? They have everything situated financially speaking pretty good. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Meta right now, up about 2.7%. Uh, they've, I feel like, not gotten as much attention, at least in the, uh, you know, kind of talk around the tech sector. But I think that's going to change. So let's take a look at what's going on uh, on Instagram. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the guy, he said the company will have 350,000 NVIDIA H100 graphics processing units and overall 600,000 H100 compute equivalent GPUs by the end of the year. What does that mean? It means they are dumping a ton of money in developing some generative AI. These H100s are, they are top of the line from NVIDIA. This really shows a throwing a big, essentially just a lot of their weight into this. Uh, I guess investors like that a lot. What I found really interesting, I'm gonna read you a quote that he had in the post. Uh, he says, our long-term vision is to build general intelligence, open source it responsibly and make it widely available so everyone can benefit. And that's the really interesting thing is open source it responsibly, right? So open source is very interesting. You can see kind of like what's running on the back end. Uh, you kind of get a better idea of how this thing is learning and the way that it's selecting uh, its, its answers and going forward. I think that's kind of I think that's kind of unique because you're not really seeing a lot of that currently. Uh, now I I wonder if they're positioning themselves that way so that they can essentially pull uh, fr from all their data on Instagram and Facebook because obviously you're going to be pulling behavior uh, uh, fr from people, for the people who use your app, and, and that can cause some issues, I would say. So I wonder if open source is going to be some kind of way that they're going to be able to point to that and be like, hey, look, we're everything's kosher. We're not just taking your data and, and putting it into some you know, hidden thing. Uh, anyways, I think this is a massive friggin' investment, uh, excuse me, a massive investment uh, from Microsoft, or excuse me, uh, from Facebook. I mean, that, that, that's pretty big. We'll talk a little bit about that. NVIDIA is up about 3.42%. Uh, the graphics processing units, uh, because they're well suited for parallel computations, of course, we spoke about that a lot. Uh, anytime you need basically a lot of computations going on at once, not just one single chain, you're uh, essentially going to GPUs, and if you're going to GPUs to learn, uh, excuse me, to teach your AI, you are going to NVIDIA. I want to take a look just quickly. I don't 
have anything currently to say about this, but let's see. Yeah, I mean, look at AMD's up 5.72%. Of course, they were offering uh, some basically replacements to NVIDIA. What I mean by replacements is a lot of these guys are, are buying up GPUs from NVIDIA in order to train their AI. Well, you still have a bunch of people on the consumer market who need uh, GPUs as well. And AMD is trying to focus on kind of making, I guess, GPUs that are going to be a little bit more affordable to the common consumer, which I think is a great niche. Um, again, people are also buying AMD uh, chips, or excuse me, GPUs, uh, in order to maintain AI that has already uh, been taught. So that's pretty impressive for AMD. They're up about 5.7% right now. I just want to double check NVIDIA's price. Yeah, up about 3.37%. And, and, you know, on OK volume. That's good. I, I think we're going to see, see this rally into the future uh, with chips. It's unknown what price Meta can purchase the H100, a quantity of 350000 And these are usually at $25,000 uh, per unit. Um, so at that price, 350000 is about $9 billion. So if that is, you know, accurate, they're spending a lot of money going into that, which I think is pretty cool for it. Take a look. We have some uh, more issues going on with, I believe, let me see if I can pull this up. Kind of, we were talking about some slowdowns in EV and uh, how that's kind of going to be an issue going forward. Uh, Ford is reducing the amount of EVs that they're going to produce and sell currently. I really would like to find that article so we can get the numbers for you. Yeah, so Ford is cutting the F 150. Uh, lightning output, which is pretty insane. So Stellantis was kind of talking about that a little bit. Uh, it has warned that car makers cutting electric vehicle prices too fast and might cause a bloodbath in the industry. And this was hours after Ford said it was reducing production uh, of their electric vehicles. And that is really because of weaker sales, right? Uh, Ford said on Friday that it wanted to bring vehicle production in line with customer demand, expecting continued growth in global EV sales in 2024. The F-150 has for years been the best-selling motor vehicle in the U.S., which is kind of crazy. Uh, and the launch of the Lightning model in 2022 was seen as an important moment uh, for EVs, essentially. Let's talk a little bit about, too. Obviously, uh, Hertz sold like 20,000 EVs recently. Uh, and then you're seeing in the news everything with the Teslas in Chicago, right? It's just... They're not charging in this insane cold that Chicago is having. And, and this is going to kind of be a native issue uh, for lithium ion batteries, right? That chemical process that allows uh, for, for power just to be generated uh, is significantly slowed when, when temperature is lower, right? Now, of course, I'm not a naysayer on these things. Most things can be solved uh, just with a few bright engineers. Uh, but I, I do think that this is kind of a perfect storm for maybe like a short term uh, kind of drop, at least on some EVs. Let's see what else we got here. Let's take a look at Ford's price. BYD as well, which is the Chinese EV car maker, is a little bit concerned, too, about flooding essentially the West. Yeah, Ford is still trading up about 1.59% uh, percent today at $11.16. And, uh, so kind of interesting. Talk a little bit about Macy's going on. This is, we're seeing, I think, kind of a general just shrink, right? Uh, this is, these are the job losses, right? Tech, and we can talk a little bit about that going forward, but tech is seeing a significant cut in the number of jobs. And actually, the CEO of Google, uh, Google said it's because of AI. But right now we're talking about Macy's. Macy's is down about 2.34%. Uh, the department store is cutting 20 excuse me, 2,350 jobs and closing five stores as it aims to streamline its operations. Of course, that's a good thing. Uh, a company spokesperson said on Thursday, the layoffs make about 3.5% of overall workforce across Macy's. Uh, the company operated 722 store locations as of January 2023 and employed 94,570 full and part-time employees, uh, and that's including the seasonal hires. The job cuts come as an investor group consisting of Arc House Management and Brigade Capital put pressure on Macy's private, excuse me, to take Macy's private in a $5.8 billion offer. Uh, the CEO said they're focused on cutting expenses on promotions to boost margins uh, as the company recovers from an inventory glut in 2022. That is uh, it's kind of rough for them. I don't know what to make of kind of these stores. I could see... I, 
I could see kind of a cultural shift in on a niche level that would prefer to be at these kind of bigger box stores. Like I don't like ordering things online that much. I'll give you a perfect example, right? Like this weekend, um, I was helping my girlfriend kind of remodel uh, essentially her apartment, right? She was buying a bunch of things from Amazon and everything that was coming was just the wrong hardware. It, it was like two different pieces entirely and it all had the wrong hardware. You have to send it back constantly. And I'm of the opinion that that happens. And I, I think maybe I have a little bit of a bias on that. Um, it ended, you know, eventually just went out to Target to buy something. So I wonder if, you know, kind of more big box stores can lean into that when they still have these kind of brick and mortar uh, locations. I don't know. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We were talking a little bit about how Macy's is cutting about uh, 2,350 workers. There's a good point. Like, I, this is kind of what was going to be expected this was the point of the of the interest rate hikes you know you kind of downsize these companies they wanted to increase uh, essentially unemployment and that that was the strategy that the fed had and uh i don't know that this is this is what you're seeing from it right you cut down you kind of consolidate what you have and uh see if you know you can wait for the next interest rate cycle to come out and you'd really explode but it but it's weird and 
And I wonder too, like, you know, you, you see the tech jobs, even like Citigroup, for Amazon, for instance, right? They've been cutting down the number of workers because they don't, no longer, money's not as cheap as it was, right? So they're just shrinking the businesses that aren't getting as much attention uh, from the consumers and, and focusing all on, on their main uh, revenue lines. But I, I wonder if this sets like some kind of precedent almost, maybe not a precedent, but like a, a strategy, you know, like you wait for interest rates to be low, you wait for money to be cheap, then you blow up and expand and everyone has jobs and everything's are good and then you contract constantly. And I, and I wonder if that's the best way to do it. Now, I'm not an economist, um, but you know, I'm sure there are competing ideas on that. But, it, but it's interesting to see. And when people are saying the economy is looking good now, uh, even though you're seeing a lot of these people basically lose their jobs, it's like that was kind of the, the end point almost, right? Now, of course, the end point was reducing inflation, right? But that was the method by which they were, they were doing that. We can take a look here. Uh, the consumer sentiment actually has increased. So let's take a look here. This is about four hours ago. Consumer sentiment surges while inflation outlook dips. Uh, University of Michigan survey shows uh, consumers have grown more confident about the direction of the economy and inflation at onset of 2024, despite persistent worries about a looming slowdown. The University of Michigan's consumer survey of consumers showed a reading of 78.8 for January. That's its highest level since July of 2021 and up 21.4% uh, from a year ago. That followed a big jump in December and comes despite public opinion surveys showing concern about the nation's direction. On a two-month basis, uh, sentiment showed its largest increase since 1991. The consumer's views were supported by confidence that inflation has turned a corner and strengthening income expectations. Uh, yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of ways you can be both bullish and bearish about what's going on. You know, I sometimes bring up more bearish arguments, but the reality of the matter is that the market is, is going up right now. And it seems like it's going to. You had that consolidation and not really a lot of a break lower, like a major retracing at all. I mean, that's that's kind of bullish, you know. Um, so I don't know. It, it, and it is interesting, too, how much the, again, the consumer's views on how the economy is going really, really does affect it, right? I mean, it's a chicken and the egg kind of thing. You have these reactions, but you also have these ideas that are kind of pushed, right? I mean, if you're like, you know, a permable, which I know a lot of people my age are because we've been told that our whole lives. I mean, you're going to say like, hey, whatever, these major pullbacks is actually a good thing I'm going to invest in. If it's ramping up, you're like, hey, that proves my sentiment as well. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Let me see here. I got, I got a ding. Okay. Uh, let me see. So we have Ronald out in Yuma. Ronald, how you doing? Good. Good. What are you taking a look at today? S-O-X-S. S-O-X-S. Okay. Direction shorts on semiconductors. That's the bearish ETF. Okay. What what are we looking at right now? What are you thinking with this? I'm not, it just looks like it's overpriced, uh, the, the semiconductors, NVIDIA and all them to me. And, uh, but it, they keep going up and... Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I know, I know Tommy would never buy them. Tom O'Brien, yes, he wouldn't buy them. I, I can't, I can't speak for what Tom would do on that. We wouldn't even touch him at fourteen bucks AMD. So you know, yeah, I, I have gotten burned so many times with success and and, and just just trying to short the semiconductors. Uh, every no, time I never shorted it. I just was, I just was looking at it and it seemed like fifty two week close on that one and. The other one was at thirty dollars. Yeah, uh, so XL. It was like at six bucks in the beginning of the year or whatever, and the other one's just the opposite. And yeah, right. So th these are obviously the direction uh, bull bear ETFs. SOXL is the bull one, and then SOXS. That's going to be obviously the bearish. That's what we're looking at right now. The, the, the way that I see it, <laughs> kind of on the general, is the semiconductors are kind of like the the hope for the economy, right? I, I think. People are getting hyped the more companies are investing in AI. I think some major players now are viewing generative AI as the place to park money. The more money that those companies that are working on generative AI uh, or even general intelligence are going to get, the higher semiconductor prices are going to go. I mean, we were just talking, you know, with Meta, it's suggested that they're going to spend billions of dollars, about $9 billion, buying, you know, 
just more of this kind of tech, right? And these semiconductors are going with it. And the semiconductor really is the major player in this kind of uh, economic transition. I do hear what you're saying, right? I mean, they're extremely expensive, but I, but I do think there's not, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, how should I say this? I, I think there's a lot of pricing in for the long-term future in it, which is why they seem so expensive, and, and they are, right? Um, but for me personally, when I have played Sox S, even these past few years, I've had the same sentiment. I'm like, this has got to pull back somehow. I, I have always gotten uh, pretty burned on it. Um, that's just my position. I, I wouldn't want to, I would not short semiconductors right now, but, um, you know, that's just about a difference of opinion, you know? Okay, so. thank you. Uh, I got the idea, but right now uh, it just seems like uh, it to me it doesn't make any sense because the technology could be outdated in five years from now, and it could be something new. Maybe they'll have uh, they might not even have software, and who knows? You know, that's what the problem with Microsoft was. I people didn't want to buy because they said the software is going to be outdated and you know they keep making it better but it's just that's I'm that's more of kind an old of what person I, like you got the gold it makes sense because it stands behind whatever it is but right but technology goes obsolete uh and then you got it what makes it they got, they keep making it better but it just seems like the technology is uh might get outdated in five years, and then the company might go back down to eight bucks like it was before. And uh, one of the ways I see I, it is that it good. no, no, it, oh, it never go that low now. But it's yeah. just I remember people were complaining when Tom says it was that went up to fourteen, and then it was pulling back to something like eight or nine. And this is AMD, and everybody's like all over, you know, because they just bought it at fourteen and. You know, and Tom says it's like, but at, during the meantime, it was up from like six. So it had to pull. It's just crazy. And uh, mm. I don't really understand it, but I, the SOSL is the way to play it, I guess, because you've made a lot of money, but. And, you have and, a great day. Thanks for listening to me. I am frustrated. Absolutely, but, Ronald. Th thank you so much for calling in. And seriously, call in any time. I mean, it, it's a good, it's really a good thought, you know? So thank you very much. I appreciate it, Ronald. Okay, folks, uh, yeah. uh, thank you very much. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. 
That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Let us take a look just quickly um, at, at Panera if it loads. Do we not even have the info on this? Hmm. Well, we don't have to take a look then, I guess. What I wanted to bring up on Panera is they're having a lot of weird. Yeah, three, fourteen ninety three. It must have, must have been taken out or something like that. Anyways, they have some. I just kind of wanted to bring up like random news on it, um, just to keep everyone culturally uh, included. What what's happening is they're getting sued a bunch now, uh, essentially because they're selling this this lemonade that has an inordinate amount of caffeine in it. Okay, and uh, I, I, there's been some serious kind of grave consequences from this caffeine. And then they just got a new lawsuit today. Uh, a 28-year-old drank two and a half of them back to back and apparently de developed an arrhythmia from it. Um, and it, it's this almost this weird thing where they're, they're not, Panera's not marketing it but now, but like the culture by word of mouth is almost marketing Panera for everyone of this like, you know, crazy drink that's going to harm you. It, you know, we at TFNN take our analysis pretty seriously here. And so I went to Panera and, and bought one of those drinks. And I mean, it tastes like it'll hurt you. So I mean, it's really just kind of weird news uh, for the day. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on with Google. Uh, they're laying off a bunch of people. Uh, Sindar said uh, this is going to continue to happen uh, because of AI, right? And this is actually competing sentiment with what uh, Bill Gates was saying, where he's saying like, oh, no, 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 like AI is going to help us keep our people and it's going to increase the amount of productivity. I don't know. You know, we looked at that study last week that was saying that a lot of uh, the more trained workers in these kind of desk jobs and in long term education are the ones that have the highest exposure to kind of losing their jobs. And, and you're seeing that happen in Google. Right. So let's take a little bit of a look at this. Uh, See here, last January, the tech giant says it's going to lay off about 12,000 employees, an equivalent of 6% of its workforce, in a bid to cut costs and focus on high-priority areas such as artificial intelligence. And it's not just them developing artificial intelligence that they're doing it, but they're saying it's because fewer workers can just do more work, right? So why pay all these workers? Okay, let's keep looking. The layoffs haven't stopped. Uh, Sundar Pichai uh, he warned staffers this week that there were there were more to come in 2024, but said that the role eliminations would not be at the same scale as last year's. Divisions from sales and advertising to product in YouTube are set to be affected, and that makes sense. You know, we're looking at uh, ChatGBT uh, just in the office, just to like kind of get a you know a pulse on what's going on with it. And you know, I was talking about the new APIs that they have. It, you know, you could be some any person just in your house and you could code one of these kind of chat GPT plugins and the thing's insane. I mean, it'll scour the internet for you for PDFs, for scholarly articles. It'll help you, you know, I've said it, it'll help you make a website. And it was really I mean, it's still nascent, right? But even 6 months ago, uh, I mean, it's nowhere close to what it is now. And this is the the kind of speed this stuff is ramping up, it's insane. And I, I, I think not focusing on this, uh, just as a society, is kind of an oversight. So let's take a look a little bit more. The worst 
it's worth pointing out that Google is not alone making such sweeping cuts. Many of its big tech peers, including Amazon, we talked about them, and Meta, have called thousands of roles to rein in wage bills that ballooned earlier in the pandemic. Uh, pushing back against it. So yeah, a lot of the workers are being like, hey, come on, man. Like, is this the way that we're actually going to do things? And I, I, I think the answer is yes. I, I think going forward, the, the structure for work is you're just going to need uh, kind of less people overall. And I, I look at this on like a grander level too. You know, it, it almost makes sense now. And with the Industrial Revolution, you had less people being born, right? Uh, excuse me, you had more people being born, okay? And as it persists, you get less and less and less. That was That's one of the big issues that's affecting, let's say, Europe. Of course, we don't have so much an issue here in America because of all the immigration that we have. Uh, we can see Japan, right? You have a population explosion at the beginning, and then you kind of get this decrease. And I, I wonder if the pressures on these countries that don't have as high of a birth rate are kind of going to be assuaged a bit because of the higher efficiency that workers will be able to put out due to AI. I think that's just kind of a unique thing. I do think, however, countries with larger populations are going to be kind of in deep trouble on this. I don't know. I'm just, that's just my perspective on it. Of course, new jobs are always created, but you do kind of for the first time even have large organizations, and, and we're talking global, global uh, organizations like the IMF, saying that this could become a big issue if something's not done about it, right? And that doesn't mean you you know, stunt the growth of AI, but it, it, it's going to take uh, maybe a little bit more thought from everyone involved, citizens and governments, kind of figure out uh, how we want to integrate AI into our societies um, in order to not to stabilize society, okay? So jobs may disappear. Nearly 40% of global employment could be disrupted by AI. This is from the IMF. Uh, almost 40% of jobs around the world could be affected by the rise of artificial intelligence. In a Sunday blog post, the IMF chief called for governments to establish social safety nets and offer retraining programs to counter the impact of AI. In most scenarios, AI will likely worsen overall inequality with it, a troubling trend uh, that policymakers must proactively address to prevent the technology from further stoking social tensions. And you think about that, like that could be a significant problem going forward. We've already seen how AI uh, can be destabilizing, right? And I bring up the uh, that kind of instance of the fake Pentagon bombing that happened, right? And now apply it to the workforce. And when you have a destabilized society, you know, your economy goes down and a lot of bad things kind of come out from that. Sam Altman, the uh, chief executive of ChatGPT maker OpenAI, uh, is the biggest backer of this. Uh, he will speak at an event later this week, which I'm going to be tuning into because I think that's super interesting. It's from Generative AI, Steam Engine, of the fourth industrial revolution. I think it's pretty neat, but it's good getting ahead of it right now. You know, there's no way this is going to stop. Countries are going to start developing their own AIs, even personally, and they're going to compete overall uh, with other nations' AIs. And I think, uh, I think it's a beautiful thing, but I also think we have to kind of plan for it as well. And it's good to be intelligent about these kind of things. Let's see here. Talk a little bit more about, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just going to talk about because I don't have the AI, or excuse me, I don't have the article up. Uh, but I've spoken about it a lot before, right? Going forward, how do we kind of bolster what consumers are experiencing? And the article I was going to pull up was about cars, okay? Um, we have inflation going down. We have the prices of most consumer goods going down. But I think, you know, tying into, like, what should we do kind of looking forward, you know, as a society, you have cars going up exponentially. It, it was something like 20% uh, of the U.S. population can no longer afford new cars, right? Um, I think these are just some bigger social things that are going to impact the economy going forward. Of course, I don't have the article, so I don't want to talk too much about it from there. We can take a look at Uber. They shut down uh, Drizzly. You're talking about one liquid that's weird for you here when the Panera lemonade and now... Uh, we're talking about Drizzly. They bought that alcohol delivery service uh, for $1.1 billion a few years ago. And let's take a look. Uber is trading right now at $65, up about 22%. Uh, Uber is shutting down Drizzly, the alcohol delivery app it purchased three years ago for $1.1 billion. Uh, the standalone online alcohol marketplace, which is poised to integrate with Uber's food delivery service, Uber Eats, will cease operating in March of this year. Uber said Tuesday in a statement, the shutdown will allow Uber to focus on providing a one-stop experience to its cups, uh, customers. Again, you're just seeing this, right? You're cutting off 
kind of the chaff. And you see this in tightening economic situations, but this is what kind of revives us and we can get forward to the next cycle. Folks, stay right there, we'll be right back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, looking at Palo Alto Networks right now. Why am I looking at Palo Alto? Well, I want to talk uh, more on my cybersecurity spiel, okay? A big hack just took place in uh, Ukraine. Kyivstar, which is uh, the largest mobile operator, uh, suffered a massive cyber attack in December. This cost the company 900 in, excuse me, $95 million. That is $3.6 billion. Hryvnias, say it with me, that's, I guess, the uh, Ukrainian currency. Uh, the c loss came from the measures the company had to take to compensate customers for the inconvenience caused by the disruptions. And this is, you know, what I'm saying. I was talking to one of my buddies uh, who works at uh, an insurance company in the area, and, you know, I was bringing up this kind of stuff to him, and it turns out that that company actually does provide cybersecurity insurance. And what was so interesting about it that I kind of realized as I was talking to the guy is that it's since our you know legislators aren't really uh, there there are standards right this is what NIST does you know you have to do these certain things and uh, but it gets uh, kind of increased right when you have insurance and the only way to become insured is that you implement some of these certain kind of controls that they have you put in uh, 
I have been against this push uh, from a lot of these larger companies in de-investing in their cybersecurity. I think it's very, I think it's not a good idea. Uh, of course, you can see Palo Alto, now they do a lot of other things beyond that, um, but they're doing phenomenally right now. Of course, you have things like Fortinet as well, which, let me take a look here. It's down a little bit right now, but 60, this is kind of more of a sideways movement that we've been getting since uh, the beginning of the year. Uh, but in the biggest news of this is that JP Morgan, they suffered a 300% increase, a 300% increase in cyber attacks last year. Okay, that is insane. And it's so much easier if you're, you know, a threat actor uh, to, to kind of conduct these things. You, you need like three guys and you can crack into these networks. Uh, they're investing, I think about, let me get that number before we go. I have it on my phone. Oh, it's like $8 billion or something like that. $8 billion going for J.P. Morgan is over the next few years on this. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. I will be with you again on Monday. I think Tom will be back Tuesday. Uh, thank you so much. Have a great weekend and stay warm. <laughs>